Today, we're going to be using our live video sync application to synchronize high-speed motion capture camera with raw motion data based on the output and synchronization of wearable sensors. I'm Joe Cabaretta. I'm a sports scientist and coach at Leomo. And today, we're at the LPC Leomo Performance Center in Boulder, Colorado. This can be applied to any sport out there, any motion out there, and especially any sport that is heavy in technique and in, in mechanics and trying to be precise in your movement. So today we're working with Furu, who is a marathon runner. Optimizing motion is huge for a distance runner, uh, just because you need to really maximize every bit of energy you're producing and be able to put it into your performance. And if you have areas where you're wasting energy and it's not propelling you forward or ultimately contributing to your goal, then that's missed potential. One thing that is a major concern for him is in previous marathons and long training runs, he's experienced cramping and some pains in his, in his right leg, um, stemming from his hip down to his calf. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do today is be taking a look at his running motion and see if we can identify some areas where we can start to clear that up. So here we have a visual of Live Video Sync's dashboard. So this top graph is displaying his torso gyro Z. That's basically a measure of how much side to side rotation he's having with his torso on each step. And then down here, just to sort of put some meaning um, <clears throat> from a time standpoint to when his torso is doing that, we're looking at his foot acceleration Y to give an indication of when he's experiencing that peak impact force in his running stride. If we look to the bottom graph, um, right here, we see this big downward spike in his acceleration. Um, so <clears throat> if we consider that his peak impact force, I want to go up top and see what's happening at his torso when it's experiencing the highest uh, degree of forces. And on this right side, we can see about 40 milliseconds after that peak impact force, right about here is when we have this large spike in rotational velocity of the torso towards the right side. So to me, this tells me that his hips and torso are not doing a good job of absorbing and stabilizing against those high impact forces. If we switch this over and look at the left side for comparison, here we have our timestamp lined up. There's his peak acceleration force for that uh, left foot stride. And then the subsequent, the subsequent collapse or stabilization in the torso is happening right about there through there. And you can tell just visually, you're not seeing a lot of collapse. The raw data reflects that in that the magnitude of these waves is much smaller. So this tells me that we probably have a rather large left-right imbalance in hip and torso strength and stability. The reason this is, is relevant to his running or may improve his performance is every time his right foot hits the ground, not only is that right leg straining a little bit more than the left, but it, he is having to correct against lateral forces and rotational forces to get himself moving forward again as that foot leaves the ground, um, which ultimately just results in more energy cost. So after looking at all this, what we're going to do is a couple movement assessments just to try to understand a little bit better why these things are happening when he runs. What I want to do is focus in on one key movement here today, and that is the single leg deadlift and reach. It's a simple movement that is really telling of his ability to maintain his center of mass when in a single leg position. So we can see right away in the data down here, as we start this movement, as soon as that acceleration Z starts to increase, that left leg is lifting just slightly off the ground and there's an immediate shift of his hips towards his standing leg, as is evident in that spike in the gyro Y. Uh, that tells me that as soon as he lifts that leg up off the ground, he's immediately having to compensate and shift his hips open to stay balanced. So this information from the movement test further supports what we saw in our run tests. The great thing about this is we now have quantifiable data for his movements to be able to start to implement into his strength programming and be able to track progress over time. So our data supports a hypothesis that Fru has a large left versus right strength and stability deficit in his running stride, which is contributing to, to pains, cramps, and loss of power in his right leg late in races and in training runs. 
So what we're going to do next is take our baseline running data and our baseline movement data and use that to create a strength and conditioning program that's specific to Furu's needs. We performed a running motion analysis. We identified a problem. We then performed movement tests to support our observations, followed by a data analysis to confirm what we were seeing with real quantifiable data. And we then proceeded to develop an action plan to help address these issues. So Fuhrer and I are going to be working together for the next several months and I'm really excited to monitor his progress and see how he improves.